Hello everyone, welcome to Study Hat. In today's video, we'll be learning about adaptations. The learning objectives for today would be to give examples of organism adaptations and to explain the difference in these adaptations as well. So why do organisms have adaptations? Organisms need to continue surviving in their environment, so they need special adaptations that will enable them to do so. Adaptations in the animals include the structural and behavioral characteristics that help with the animals to cope with physical factors, obtain food, escape predators, and reproduce. So you can see that every aspect of these adaptations aid with the survival of the living thing. What are structural adaptations? So these adaptations include the special features found on animals and plants such as beaks and tendrils respectively. Behavioral adaptations include mannerisms of the animals to attain or overcome certain things. So let's look at some physical factors. Physical factors include the weather conditions in a habitat. So in very hot climates, organisms survive through adaptations that enable them to withstand or lose the excess heat and to prevent loss of water from their systems. Because when it's very hot, you want to get rid of the heat as much as you can. And at the same time, you don't want to lose too much water because as you know, we are made of 70% of water and water is a vital element in a living thing. So if you lose too much water, you can become dehydrated and that could cause death. For example, the fox that lives in deserts has large ears to enhance heat loss from its body. These animals are also nocturnal. They burrow during daytime to keep away from the heat and only come out at night. Okay, so that's a very smart way to adapt to the really, really hot climates. So adaptation to the cold surroundings. They have thick fur that keep them warm during the cold nights in the desert. So if you can see just within this one fox, right, it has adaptations for both extreme hot and extreme cold weathers. Now, how do you think the cactus is adapted to surviving in the cold environment? So pause this video to have a think. So the first observation that you can see from this picture is that this barrel cactus has really, really long roots. So you can see that it takes very long for the water from the soil to be absorbed and to be transported to the plant itself. So now let's imagine if these roots were pretty short and a lot of water is transported to the cactus. What do you think will happen in an extremely cold environment? You're right, the leaves will actually get frozen because there's a lot of moisture and water in that. So the fact that this cactus has really long roots shows that there's not much water that's going up or it takes a very long time for the water to be transported so that the cactus actually is kept dry to prevent it from getting frozen. Now, adaptations to extreme weather conditions. So organisms have adaptations to survive extreme weather conditions and some animals living in hot regions adapt by having large ears like what we talked about before. They burrow, so they dig deep and they burrow and they also survive by being nocturnal. Plants do similar things in hot regions by having needle-like leaves to prevent too much water loss. They have widespread fibrous roots, again, to make sure there's enough water that's being absorbed, and they have swollen stems. So animals in cold climate. In very cold climates, the animals such as polar bears usually have thick fur with a thick layer of fat under their skin. These reduce heat loss from the animal's body, and polar bears also hibernate throughout winter to conserve energy in their body. So again, very strategic. Now, what about coniferous trees? These trees have thick barks to protect themselves against the cold. Their cone-shaped structure helps them to overcome heavy snowfalls and they have waxy needle-like leaves to reduce water loss. So there's three adaptations here. The thick barks to protect themselves against the cold, the cone-shaped structure to overcome heavy snowfalls, and they have waxy needle-like leaves to reduce water loss. Now, what are some adaptations by other animals? So some of these animals have sharp talons and pointed beaks in birds. They camouflage, they hunt in groups, they have keen sense of smell and good vision, or they have sharp teeth and strong claws. So if you see all of these different adaptations, again, it is to emphasize on the fact that they need these for survival to obtain food and to protect themselves. So animal eaters such as tigers and lions have many adaptations that enable them to catch their prey easily. So look, with the stripes, they can camouflage amongst the plants. They have keen senses of sight and smell. Again, they can spot their prey and they can plan their attack. They have sharp teeth, again, to tear into the meat of their prey. 
strong claws again when they're trying to catch the prey they can actually use their strong claws to attack and capture the prey so how do plants adapt plants have adaptations to enable them to receive maximum sunlight to carry out photosynthesis because that's their main function correct so aquatic plants have special features that help them to float or be positioned upright to obtain sunlight so even with your home plants sometimes you can notice that the leaves of your plants actually face where they can get maximum sunlight or they grow towards where they receive sunlight from. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? So floating plants, such as water hyacinths, have swollen stems and waxy leaves that enable them to stay afloat to receive direct sunlight. Duckweeds, on the other hand, are small and light. So these two are some examples of floating plants. What about plants living in forests? These plants usually grow very tall because they want to compete with one another for sunlight. Because imagine if you have a very short tree here, it's not going to receive any sunlight. So they grow really tall because they're competing to get enough sunlight. So what about those with weak stems? So plants with weak stems have special features like tendrils and clasping roots to enable the plants to cling on to other supportive structures like other plants or poles while they grow upwards to reach for more sunlight. So these are some examples of them. So grapevine, money plant, cling on to their support. And the morning glory actually twines around its support as it grows. Aquatic animals. The way that these animals actually adapt are that they have streamlined body shape to cut through the water as they swim. Their fins and tails and fish, again, allow movement. They have modified limbs such as flippers, again, to help with movement. So some examples of marine life adaptations would include animals that swim in water such as fish have streamlined body shapes to help them move through the water better. Fish have fins and tail to help them balance in water and propel forward respectively. Frogs have webbed feet while penguins and turtles have flippers and enable them to swim faster in water. So you can see the different animals based on their body structure and based on how they obtain their food, they have specific adaptations. So what about breathing adaptations? Whales and dolphins breathe through their lungs and blow holes. So we know how aquatic animals usually breathe through gills, but whales and dolphins breathe through their lungs and hence they have the blow holes to compensate for it. Fish breathe through gills, the water scorpion, mosquito larva, and water stick insect breathe through a breathing tube. Crab, mudskipper breathe through gills when they're in water and through gill chambers when they're on land. So there's a bit of an adaptation between land and water with the crab and the mudskipper. The gill chambers are able to hold water containing oxygen for some time for the animals to take in. So they normally breathe through their gills, but then the gill chambers actually contain some of the oxygen as well. So they can actually survive outside the water for a while. And once that runs out, they have to go back into the water. So let's have a look at more interesting adaptations. So some of them have eye spots, some have warning colors, some have camouflaging against their surroundings. And again, these things help them to escape their predators and also moving in large groups. So you can see that each of these adaptations actually help to protect the animal itself. Now, behavioral adaptations. Animals have many adaptations to enhance reproduction in them or in their species. The male animals usually display courtship rituals to attract their female counterparts. And some of the tactics that animals use to attract one another are via songs, calls, positions, mimics, vibrations, light codes, flashy colors, scents, and proud strutting. So they have a lot of ways to attract one another to ensure that they can reproduce. Now, let's have a look at the peacock. So the peacock actually displays its colorful feathers to attract the peahens, okay? And the peacock is actually the male version of it, and they are the ones that are colorful, okay? But another thing is that the male humpback whale actually hums a special tune to attract its female. It also breaches above the sea surface to communicate with other whales as well. So let's look at some adaptations by plants. Plants have many adaptations for seed dispersal. So I'm pretty sure you remember the chapter where we went through different modes of seed dispersal. These plants have flowers that have evolved to different smells, colors, shapes, and sizes, and even the way they disperse, right, to attract specific insects or animals to pollinate the flowers. The different modes of seed dispersal include animals, wind, water, splitting, or explosive mechanism. Um, pretty sure you can revise all of this one by one. It would be good to have a quick run through of what each of them are. Seeds that are dispersed by animals are usually contained in sweet, fleshy fruits, or they also have these hook like structures that hook onto animals when they move around. 
The animals eat the fruit and drop the seeds elsewhere or pass the seeds through the droppings onto the ground. Now, seeds that are dispersed by wind are usually very light, so you can imagine, because you want them to be carried by wind, so it has to be light. Some are even as fine as dust, while others have parachute-like or wing-like structures which help carry the seeds away from the parent plant. Seeds dispersed by water are usually contained in fruits that can float on water, and the plants can be found growing near the sea or rivers, which makes sense, right? Because that's how you can be easily carried away and transported via water. In the splitting or explosive mechanism, the seeds are shot out from the pods when ripe. So you can imagine an explosion that's happening and the seeds are just shot out, okay? So that it's far away from the parent plant. So that's the end of our lesson for today. Have a go at the quiz right after this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!